In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. My brothers and sisters in Jesus, we come together as God's family to celebrate these sacred mysteries, that we may do so worthily and reverently. Let us first acknowledge our sins and ask for God's forgiveness. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Glory to God in the highest. Let us peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit, and the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who founded all the commands of your sacred law upon love of you and of our neighbor, grant that by keeping your precepts, we may merit to attain eternal life. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the Book of Wisdom. The godless say to themselves, Let us lie in wait for the virtuous man, since he annoys us and oppose our way of life, reproaches us for our branches of the law and our breaches of the law, and accuses us of playing false to our upbringing. Let us see if what he says is true. Let us observe what kind of end he himself will have. If the virtuous man is God's son, God will take his part and rescue him from the clutches of his enemies. Let us test him with cruelty and with torture, and thus explore this gentleness of his, and put his endurance to the proof. Let us condemn him to a shameful death, since he will be looked after. We have his word for it. The word of the Lord. The Lord upholds my life. O God, save me by your name, by your power uphold my cause. O God, hear my prayer, listen to the words of my mouth. For proud men have risen against me, ruthless men seek my life, they have no regard for God. But I have God for my help, the Lord upholds my life. I will sacrifice to you with willing heart and praise your name, for it is good. A reading from the letter of St. James. Wherever you find jealousy and ambition, you find disharmony, and wicked things of every kind being done. Whereas the wisdom that comes down from above is essentially something pure. It also makes for peace, and is kindly and considerate. It is full of compassion, and hypocrisy in it. Peacemakers, when they work for peace, sow the seeds which will bear fruit in holiness. Where do these wars and battles between yourselves first start? Isn't it precisely in the desires fighting inside your own selves? You want something and you haven't got it, so you're prepared to kill. You have an ambition that you cannot satisfy so you fight to get your way by force. Why you don't have what you want is because you don't pray for it. 
When you do pray and don't get it, it is because you have not prayed properly. You have prayed for something to indulge your own desires. The word of the Lord. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. I am the light of the world, says the Lord. Anyone who follows me will have the light of life. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Mark. After leaving the mountain, Jesus and his disciples made their way through Galilee and he did not want anyone to know because he was instructing his disciples. He was telling them, the Son of Man will be delivered into the hands of men. They will put him to death and three days after he has been put to death, he will rise again. But they did not understand what he said and were afraid of to ask him. They came to Capernaum. And when he was in the house, he asked them, What were you arguing about on the road? They said nothing because they had been arguing which of them was the greatest. So he sat down, called the twelve to him, and said, If anyone wants to be first, he must make himself last of all and servant of all. He then took a little child, set him in front of them, put his arms round him and said to them, Anyone who welcomes one of these little children in my name welcomes me. And anyone who welcomes me welcomes not me, but the one who sent me. The Gospel of the Lord. Uh, normally, I think it's true to say, uh, priests tend to preach about the gospel or the first reading because there's normally a connection uh, between the first reading and the gospel. So quite often the, the second reading uh, gets ignored or forgotten. But with a scripture scholar as your Parish priest, you may well be aware that for four weeks now, and indeed next week, uh, the, that middle reading is from the letter of St. James. Now, I'm not in the same league as Canon McMahon, but I would say this, that the letter of St. James is arguably the most practical of the New Testament letters. Uh, He takes a kind of no-nonsense attitude to following Jesus. Uh, For example, if you feel your examination or your conscience at bedtime is not as sharp as it used to be, then read the letter of St. James. You know, the media are already talking about Christmas. I'm sure you've already seen on television adverts referring to Christmas. And even in the news, the horror that there's not going to be enough toys in the shops at Christmas. And it's kind of dispiriting that already for quite a long time uh, the, the, the commercial world has been preparing for Christmas, but maybe we should take our hats off to them for planning ahead. But the thing they miss always is the season of Advent, and that comes first. It's not all that long to go till Advent, a wee while yet, but not all that long. So we might begin to think 
Well, Advent's a wee bit like Lent, a time of Lent's a preparation for Easter, Advent's a preparation for Christmas, and it has that kind of um, penitential aspect about it. So that would maybe be a good thing, a little penance or mortification to take upon yourself uh, during Advent to read uh, for yourself the whole letter of St. James, not just these random passages that we're hearing over this period of five weeks. Well, in this passage tonight, James asks, where do the wars and where do the conflicts among you come from? That's a good question to ponder. Where do the wars and where do the conflicts among you come from? And then he adds, do not covet uh, what others' possessions. Do not covet what you don't possess. You don't possess because you don't ask. And you ask because, but do not receive because you're asking in the wrong way or the wrong things very often in order to spend these things on our passions. Well, look what James is doing here. First of all, he's making a diagnosis, and then he exposes a spiritual wound and the underlying disease that we have to view. But then he directs our attention to the cure. It's a bit like going to the doctor, he'll ask questions, he'll uh, maybe examine you, make a diagnosis, uh, and then prescribe treatment that's going to be for your good, even if it doesn't taste good or appealing, nevertheless, you know it's for your ultimate good, and so you, you take it, you, you, you listen to what the doctor says, and that's what happens in St. James's Gospel. He gives us a cure, and the cure is not just the doctor, but the divine physician, our Lord Jesus Christ. And we receive the grace of Christ, of his saving remedy, through our prayers, through our reception of the sacraments, through little acts of mortification that we take upon ourselves, for example, on a Friday. Um, Friday is uh, you know, a general uh, uh, instruction that we should have some sacrifice or some little act of self-denial on Fridays um, because it teaches us the value of self-discipline <coughs> And it unites us to the, the passion of Christ. So we need to conform our lives to the life of Christ so as to fittingly receive the gift of God's grace. What does that mean in practical terms? Well, it means that if you receive the sacraments but continue to live in serious sin, then Christ's grace will not be given to you. The Gospel passage today teaches us the need to conform ourselves to the image of the cross, not the other way around. So that means that we have to be the last of all and the servant of all. That's one of the most precious, beautiful titles that the Pope has the servant of the servants of God. But just think of it this way. If you give a gift to somebody, you probably forget about it. But if someone dear to you gives you a gift, you'll probably never forget about it. And what St. James and what St. Mark would ask us to do is to serve, 
to be the first in service, the first to volunteer, the first to be thinking of other people and their needs, the first to be ready for anyone and everyone who may need us, but also always to do so with joy. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through whom all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven, seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. His kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds in the Father and the Son, with the Father and the Son as Lord and glorified, as spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look forward to the resurrection of the dead, the life of the world to come. Amen. Dear friends, Jesus has invited us to work with him as a servant of those in need and to welcome the lowly in his name. For Pope Francis, servant of the servants of God, that he will guide the church with humility and tenderness, Lord, hear us. Lord, gracious hear us. For the Diocese of Paisley, that we will be blessed by vocations to the priesthood and the religious life, Lord, hear us. Lord, gracious hear us. For world leaders, that they may find a wisdom that is pure, makes for peace, is kindly and considerate, full of compassion and intent on doing good. Lord, hear us. Lord, gracious hear us. For those enduring drought and poor soil conditions, that in this season of creation, those with skills and experience will share their knowledge and make the land sustainable. Lord, hear us. Lord, gracious hear us. For those who have died, that they will find joy in the heavenly home, especially Alfred Taylor, Hannah Mead, Thomas Sparrow, and Joan Adams. Lord, hear us. Lord, gracious hear us. O oh God, let us turn to our blessed Mother Mary and pray, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy own Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. O God, save us by your name. Hear our prayer, listen to our words, uphold our lives, and receive our prayers. Through Christ our Lord. Amen.
Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Receive with favor, O Lord, we pray, the offerings of your people, that what they profess with devotion and faith may be theirs through these heavenly mysteries, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right, truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you laid the foundations of the world and have arranged the changing of times and seasons. You formed man in your own image and set humanity over the whole world in all its wonder to rule in your name over all you have made and forever praise you in your mighty works through Christ our Lord. And so with all the angels we praise you as in joyful celebration we acclaim holy, 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 holy Lord God of hosts. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, fresh your resurrection. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and John, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ, through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, 
All glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Saviour's command, and formed by a divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, to set your apostles, peace I leave you, my Peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who will live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Lamb of God, Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. I am the good shepherd, says the Lord. I know my sheep, and mine know me. A spiritual communion. I wish, Lord, to receive you with the purity, humility, and devotion with which your most holy mother received you, with the spirit and the fervor of the saints.
Let us pray. Graciously raise up, O Lord, those you renew with this sacrament, that we may come to possess your redemption, both in mystery and in the manner of our life. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Dear friends, the Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you all, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go, the Mass is ended.